Hello, and thank you for joining us. My name is Sean Wren, and I am the field programmer for CIF at home with NYU DC Dialogues. Tonight, we have a pre recorded QA with Ruin McGann and Joseph M. Hassett discussing the 2022 documentary, 100 Years of Ulysses. And so, this is a pre recorded QA, so we won't be able to take any uh, questions, unfortunately, from the audience. Um, Ruin McGann is a director, producer, writer, and creator whose work in drama, documentary, theater, and major stadium events has been recognized with over 40 industry awards and has reached audiences of millions around the world. Our moderator tonight is Joseph M. Hassett, who has written extensively on Yeats, Joyce, and other Irish writers. He holds a PhD in Anglo-Irish literature from University College Dublin and is a graduate of Harvard Law School. His books include W.B. Yeats and the Muses and the Ulysses Trials. Uh, before we begin tonight's discussion, I would like to highlight some upcoming sort of newer programming. Um, the podcast, podcast series, We Are the Makers, returns on October 15th with the latest installment focusing on the artist Alwyn Fuera. Um, running from November 3rd to 20th, Solis Nua presents the Playboy of the Western World at the Atlas Performing Arts Center, and tickets are available right now on Solis Nua's website for that um, play. We are also open for submissions for the 17th Annual Capital Irish Film Festival. Um, the deadline for submissions is the 31st of October, so if you have a filmmaker or a filmmaker friend, I should say, let them know we are taking submissions. And SIF at Home will return in November with When Women Won, a documentary on the Irish abortion referendum, and uh, registration is also open for that right now. Uh, there will be links to all of these things and more in the chat very soon, but for now, I will hand you over to the recording of Ruin and Joe. Thank you for joining us and have a good night. Well, Ruin, uh, congratulations on this uh, marvelous documentary. Uh, uh, it, it's so informative and so entertaining. Um, it reminds me of, in a way, of what uh, Paul Muldoon is quoted as saying about Ulysses in your documentary that uh, Joyce managed to both uh, give the big uh, panoramic shot and then kind of, kind of zoom in for the up close uh, and personal kind of shot. Uh, I think your documentary does that. It's a wonderful experience uh, to, 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 to learn and to enjoy oneself. Um, I bet people would be interested in knowing that how you got uh, got into this project. Well, well, uh, thank you so much, Joe. And um, it's a it's a real honor for us to be involved in SIF at home. Um, uh, we were we were a number of years making this documentary. It all began with my cousin, the late Frank Callan, um, who approached me with this idea. And Frank is a, a barrister, was a barrister, historian, and a Joycean. I was in the middle of writing a book about Joyce and nationalism um, when he sadly actually died just as we finished this documentary. So, so we de dedicated the, the film to him. Um, it's very much his vision, Joe. So I, I uh, but, but you know, I make documentaries. He's a historian, a Joycean, and we sort of came together. And uh, and uh, I have to say, when he when he when he called me first, I was I was absolutely terrified um, because I don't know. I just was very very fearful of taking on Ulysses and Joyce and. I, I, like so many people, had never got beyond the first couple of chapters, um, and suddenly I knew that I'd have to go the whole way through it, and not just that, but actually try and come to, to some understanding about what he was at. Um, and it's funny you say that at the beginning about, about what Muldoon says about about Ulysses, about having the capacity to show us the big picture and also the tiny, tiny little details. That was the thing that that really hit me when I started reading the book. Is it's really cinematic, you know? He he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't so much describe things in detail. He famously doesn't describe in any location or any place. And yet you immediately have a sense of what places look like, what places feel like. And he seems to do this by jumping way out into a massive big picture and then going into very, very small details. Um, there's one of the scenes, sorry, if you don't mind me going on, but it kind of answers oh, your really, question. Absolutely. Well, one of the scenes that, that really, really has always got me is, um, I think it's in, in Wandering Rocks, and it's the vice regal cavalcade is driving through Dublin, and we've met all these characters in this episode, and suddenly the vice regal, um, you know, cavalcade, which is of course a very, very important, significant 
um, thing in a in a in an Ireland that at that point is is dominated or run or you know it part of the it's, it's a colony of Britain essentially, and here's the 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 symbol of power driving through Dublin, and all the characters that Joyce has introduced us to in that episode look at look at the vice regal carriage passing them, but have a completely different perspective and and a different feeling about it, different time, and that felt to me very cinematic. It felt to me like. Joyce is like ahead of cinema, although, although of course he was a great lover of cinema. But he he he's 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 seeing he's foretelling how cinema is going to deal with 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 the setting of a scene as a most beautiful brilliant cinematic um, scene. So I was terrified. I couldn't have done it without Frank Callan, um, and it was made for the to mark the hundredth anniversary of the RT of a uh, of of the publication of the book. Um, and anyway, there we go. It's been the most exciting journey. Well, I don't want to let a mention of uh, Frank go by without my saying, uh, uh, God rest him. <coughs> uh, I had the greatest uh, admiration and affection for Frank. And I think everybody who knew him had that, that those two feelings about him. I mean, he was a, a very larger than life guy and uh, just a wonderful person to be with yeah. and uh, to have a conversation with. So you must have had many of them both before <laughs> and during the making uh -huh. of this. He, he was so patient with me. I have to say, he, he's a cousin of mine, okay? So so we're second cousins, and his mother and my father were double first cousins. So wow. there was two brothers married, two sisters. And um, and, and even so, I, I didn't really know Frank very well when, when he first got on to me. Um, but in the two years we worked together on this, I really, really got to know him. And he was, he was, he was very, very patient with me because, as I say, I was an ingenue. I knew nothing. And... Um, um, I remember like one of the things he used to tell me is, so I, I, there, there, there's an instance, for example, I, I wrote a line that, that when they decided to move to Paris after Geneva, um, I said something like, um, you know, that, that, um, uh, Nora would be, would be quite pleased about that. And, and he, he, he reads this draft and he says, well, why are you saying that? I said, well, because in 1905, she'd written a letter about that she loved Paris and she'd love to go and part to Paris sometime. And he says, yes, but we don't know that she, by the time they wanted to go and, you know, when 1970 and 18, that they, that they, that she wanted to go then. I said, well, it seems quite obvious. She wanted to go once upon a time. Now she ends up going there. And he said to me, if it's not an Elman, you can't say it. <laughs> so for anyone who, who listening to us talking, who doesn't know what Elman is, I have Elman here. That's there he is. is. There. Right. So this is the biography on James Joyce. And it's kind of like if Ulysses is the Quran, right? Well, these this is the Sunnah, right? This is Muhammad's work. This is this is how you interpret the Quran. Well, and you've done a great job uh, bringing the uh, Summa uh, to all of us uh, viewers. Tell me, did uh, uh, Frank have a different view of what Irish nationalism meant or should mean uh, than you did when you started out? And did yours change during the making of this? Document. Sure. Yeah, no, that's funny you should ask that because he, um, so, so, so Frank's core idea, and in fact, the, the book, which, which I understand is going to be um, published posthumously soon, um, was, was about Joyce and nationalism. And Frank's idea was that Joyce was a, was a nationalist. Um, and for those who have seen the documentary, you'll, you'll, you'll understand that, that, that for many in Ireland, it, it, Joyce was seen as a, something of a traitor, that, that he, you know, he turned his back on Ireland, he left Ireland. Um, he had nothing but bad to say about Ireland. He only criticised Ireland doesn't come out very well in Ulysses, you know, um, like a very small-minded, narrow culture. Um, and of course, that's not true. Actually, I think Ulysses is a celebration of all this wondrous in Ireland as well. But 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 a lot of people felt that he he has he was being quite cruel towards Ireland, and therefore they they didn't reciprocate. Um, you know, or didn't they they didn't treat him particularly well either. So he was judged as a non-nationalist. But Frank had this theory that no, no, he was a nationalist. He just wasn't a radical nationalist. He didn't believe in violence, but he really loved his country. Um, and and I suppose um, Frank's thesis was that was that Joyce was 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 angered that there was a an alternative form of nationalism that died with Parnell, and that there was a and that had Parnell lived and had the church not gained so much control over Ireland, there would have been this other version of Irish independence that would have developed over time. Um, and what's interesting about that is my, my, I was reared in a very, very strongly nationalist family. I'm an Irish speaker. 
my grandmother went to prison a lot for, for, for the, uh, during the Irish Revolution. She spoke Irish. She was leader of Common Amman. Um, so I was reared in this very sort of extreme nationalism where everything that Britain did was wrong and, and the heroes of 1916 were the best thing in the world. And, and it, it's taken me a, my lifetime to sort of unpick that and realize that that's a very narrow view. And then working with Frank on this, I began to recognize that uh, there was this much broader form of nationalism that existed uh, or, or just a way of being Irish that existed. Um, and that Joyce was, 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 I suppose, angered that that had disappeared. And that's one of the reasons why he left. And was, what was for me personally interesting was my father, who was a very quiet man, he was a doctor. And he was, so from the other side of Frank's, you know, he, he, he's on Frank's mother's side of the family. Um, he felt very much like Frank did, that there was this other Ireland that we lost. And my father was a Redmondite. He didn't believe in the extreme nationalism of the Irish Re Revolution. And so a great thing for me personally was on this journey, I came to know my father much better and, and became a little more suspicious now of what my grandmother was selling me when I was young. Um, <laughs> well, that so. is, that's really fascinating. And I, as you were talking, I couldn't help but think of Frank's statement in your documentary that uh, the reason why uh, the citizen uh, is in an episode called The Cyclops uh, and is and thought to be a cyclops or a cyclopean figure uh, is because he could only see uh, Ireland and Irish history through uh, one eye and he was missing out a lot. Uh, I think that's a very powerful, powerful thing. And uh, <laughs> could he, have, could Frank, God rest him, maybe have thought that about you at one stage and feel that uh, the process of making it, <laughs> he, he had converted you or at least open, opened another eye. <laughs> opened, opened my, I think, yeah, I think this was me when I went to Frank. That's, that's very good. Absolutely. That's very good. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He pierced my, my, my one eye. And do you know what? I'm thinking a lot of you, if you look at what's going on in Iran right now, um, it, there, there's similarities there to the Ireland that ended up emerging um, in the later part of the 1800s and the early part of the 1900s, you know, where the church had so much power and women were put in their place and and any sort of ideas that were that were that were seen as maybe risky were were were, were shunned or set aside or banned. Um, whereas Joyce was calling through Ulysses for for tolerance, wasn't he? He was calling for us to be, you know, to get rid of prejudice and to try and just be open to to whatever. You know, if 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 if, if Molly's having an affair, Bloom doesn't seem to have a major problem with it at the end. You know, it's like so just just let people be the way they are. It seems to be what Joyce is asking of us. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just, just watching those terrible, terrible images of what's happening in Iran and, and the braveness of, you know, the courage of the women who are standing up against it. I just can't help feel that that message continues to be important and continue, Joyce's message still needs to be shared, doesn't it? Totally. And I could go back to that uh, uh, Cyclops scene. Um, and uh, you mentioned this in the documentary. Uh, Bloom is such an important figure there. Uh, for a couple of reasons, uh, one being that his Jewishness uh, is, a, in a way, a rebuke to the notion that to be Irish, you have to be a, of Irish blood of some kind. Um, and uh, also, he makes that wonderful speech uh, um, saying violence, hatred, that's not what human life is. Uh, and I think Alf asks him, well, what is? He says, the opposite of a love. I mean, that is such a powerful scene within the novel. And as you say, it is so pertinent to today in every country, including my own. Um, the idea of, uh, of being in a project together as opposed to being, I was here first. Of course, most Americans were not here first. Uh, we had a native population here that uh, has been one of the populations oppressed by the people uh, who came here from Europe. Um, but the, the notion of everybody in the same place working together is something that I think is, uh, we've lost our grip on that. And we have a lot to learn from the, the Cyclops scene uh, in Ulysses, I think, and, and, and from your movie. You know, you're absolutely, you're, you're so right. I and mean, you, you think, yes, that, that there's certain elements of that rising in America. You see it in Italy in the last few days, 
with the election of a hard right um, prime minister. And uh, you see it in Hungary. You see it, 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 it's really amazing that how current. Sorry, I, I, the reason I took out Elman's book was, was because he, op he opens the introduction. I know you know this, Joe, but I read it for, for our audience. As he starts with, we are still learning to be James Joyce's contemporaries to yeah. understand our interpreter. It, it, that's, just, that's the opening of one of the most amazing biographies. If you don't read Ulysses, just read Elman. It's absolutely an incredible book. But, uh, but he's, 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 he's reminding us that, that jo Joyce was way ahead. He could see, he could see what, what might be coming. He hoped it wouldn't be coming, but he could see it. And it's today you read Ulysses and it feels as if it was just written yesterday. It's, it's very, very current. And the same dangers, which were you know, of a small scale in, in Ireland, but did turn out to be on a much greater scale in, across Europe in the period be, in between the two first, first and Second World War. And now you see it again rising. And there are dangers inherent in those places, you know, that we need to challenge and say no to. Um, and again, I think that's that's one of the things that really motivated Frank Callan. He was a man who lived by his own spirit. And, you know, he um, he took difficult court cases as a barrister and and uh, yeah, he, he, he lived his own line and, and, and was very careful to, to be friends with everybody, you know, all kinds of people. So, and I think, I think there's a lesson for all of us in that, isn't there? Yeah, and you know, one of the interesting things uh, about your documentary is it makes the point that uh, Ulysses is a quote, European novel, which doesn't mean it can't be an Irish novel too. And uh, it, it's kind of, it, it really uh, grabs the viewer's attention to see the name of Valerie Larbaud up uh, on the screen right at the beginning of the documentary, which I think there's a message there. What's the message? What's the yeah. message there? Oh, listen. So v Valerie Larbaud was a modernist French writer. And uh, I, 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 to my shame, had never heard of him until Frank mentioned him. And, and uh, for Frank, it was, it was really important that, 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 we, that, we, that we get Larbaud into the story. And it took me quite a while to understand why. But but on the eve of the publication of Ulysses, um, there, was a, there was an event in Paris and um, Larbo was invited to give a talk. And the talk was to introduce Ulysses to the world, to launch the book, I suppose. But interestingly, Joyce, uh, as Frank says in the documentary, coached Larbo. He, he told him what to say. <laughs> and, and, and so you gotta think that, you know, that Joyce has been out of Ireland at this point for how long? Eight, 17 years or something? I mean, I mean, you know, he's, he's severed. He's only been home in his whole life. He only went back four times, right? So he severed his connection very much with his homeland. And meanwhile, his homeland has severed all connection with Joyce. And yet these are the words that Joyce gives Larbo, I have them here in front of me, uh, to say is, in writing Dubliners, Portrait of the Artist in Ulysses, Joyce did as much as did all the heroes of Irish nationalism to attract the respect of intellectuals of every other country towards Ireland. So, so here's Joyce comparing himself. Well, who, who are the heroes of Irish nationalism? I mean, they're uh, uh, Wolf Tone, Robert Emmett, Patrick Pierce, you know, you know, Yeats, uh, St. Patrick, you, you know, they're, they're all of these totems, which totem, totemic figures, which, which apparently we understood that Joyce isn't into, but here he is going, no, I'm with them. I'm one of those. And I'm, I'm, I'm part of this movement. I'm part of Sing. I'm part of the great writers in the Blaskets. I'm part of the Irish independence movement. And, uh, and, and so that's the interesting thing is this, this little secret message that Joyce left us through Valerie Larbo. And bear in mind, Lar Larbo would have had his own mind. If he didn't feel that he agreed, he wouldn't have said those words. Oh, right? totally, totally. Well, that's so interesting because, you know, I, I think of Yeats writing that, uh, well, actually, Yeats said something similar to this, but Seamus Heaney in the Field Day book of Irish literature um, makes the point that Yeats had to create the consciousness by which he would be critiqued and understood. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that your documentary uh, makes quite subtly, but it makes the point that uh, Joyce created a consciousness in Ireland uh, that now, maybe a hundred years later, or you know, 75, 80, 90, <laughs> uh, is appreciating Joyce for what what he was. I mean, it, it's it's quite interesting that his book uh, created its own climate for it to be understood, I think. And you and Frank have made that process uh, accelerate through this, this fascinating documentary. 
it's it's on um, it's on Arte at the moment. Um, on Arte, it's a French German channel um, that that's got a very big reach in Central Europe, um, and so it's in French and it's in German. Um, actually, we just heard today it's been picked up by China as well. So it's going to be in Chinese very soon. It's been re, wow. re, 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 re versions in Chinese. But I make the point because it, this, look, it's a simple documentary. We, we did that on purpose. You know, it, we, we, it's not like a high, high brow, high polluting. We just thought, let's make something that's accessible. Because one of the problems with Eunice is that people perceive it as inaccessible. I can, I can vouch that it actually is wonderful once you just dive in, just dive in like you dive into the sea. Um, but, 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 but in making it a modern documentary, we, we chose to have a young woman doing the narration. So it's Anne Skelly. She's a rising star in America, but she's very much from Dublin. Um, and then having in the music and the graphics and all the team, we have an awful lot of women and an awful lot of young people. And, and it was really interesting making the film, how excited everybody was to have the opportunity to, to make this film about Joyce and about Ulysses because they normally wouldn't have the chance. And yet they do feel ownership. They, they feel that Joyce belongs to us, you know, the young Irish people. So that was, that it was, there was a thrill for all of us making the film, which was, which, which, which is unusual, you know, because they tend to be very heavy and very hard work. Whereas this one was just an absolute joy the whole way through. That was um, a great idea because you, you one watching it uh, can feel that. You, you feel the excitement and you feel the ownership of Joyce. That's the interesting thing, is that he's being embraced. Yeah. I've been By reading me. lately my friend John McCourt's great book about consuming Joyce, and he makes the point that uh, uh, the initial reaction of the Dublin in particular, but Irish uh, literati generally was uh, uh, that nobody who wasn't born in Dublin uh, could understand the book and we uh, don't care to understand it and uh, therefore we're not going to say anything. Yeah. And uh, it really took the better part of that hundred years, not all of it, but for Joyce through his own work in writing Ulysses created uh, the readership that would understand and appreciate it. And it's, it's so exciting to see your documentary and, and, and see that come alive. It, it's, uh, it, it's, it's really a very energizing experience to, to, to watch your, your documentary. It's, it's such a profound point you make because uh, one of the things I couldn't get over is the amount of languages that Ulysses has been translated into. Now, okay, it's a successful book and everyone knows it and it's, it's very, very important, but trying to translate Ulysses into any other language other than English is, is is just mind-bogglingly difficult and complex. So what it speaks to is this massive love that people feel towards the book. It's a it's unusual thing yeah. to to take on and to feel driven to it. To take it must take you know. It, well, I know I've talked I've talked to translators. It takes years to undertake something like that. And if you have the, I have several different language versions. You have a French one over there, and of course, immediate within about two or three pages, they they lose sync with each other because it, they're different books. Yeah. They're not like a normal translation. They literally are it's different language. Language has to be created. New French and uh, English or Irish people would think differently, you know? Um, and so, and we're having a similar now fun trying to translate our documentary into, into, uh, into, into all these other languages, which is going out in. Um, but, it, but doesn't it, that speak to the point you're making that, that you, Joyce made this extraordinary new world for himself and we all just want to dive in and inhabit it? Well, you know, what you say is so interesting. And I think of uh, Anne Enright wrote a brilliant, uh, I think it's an introduction to one of the 100-year uh, uh, editions of Ulysses. And it was also a piece ran in the New York Review of Books in which she says that uh, the brilliance of Joyce as a writer was that he gives us readers just enough information and detail that we can finish the story in our own way. And it, it's, it's really, it's a brilliant insight, I think, that the novel is always being completed in the mind of the reader. And, and so, and that can happen in different cultures in different ways. That's part of its, of its power. And I'm, 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 I'm going to, uh, I, I, I hope you don't think I'm bringing the tone of the conversation down too far, but I, um, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's so, so for me, it was, it was a bit, I never said this to Frank, so God, God forbid me, Frank, but it, it's like, it's a bit like, it's a bit like going to Vegas, like you'll find whatever it is you want there, yeah. right? <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's wide open. And, and, and like you say, yes, you finish the stories yourself, but you also, 
you, you, so in the sense that you, you will find whatever it is you're looking for. And so whatever it is you're into is in Ulysses. And that's, that's the genius of it. He somehow has put absolutely everything that is part of the human experience that we've ever thought into the book. And as you're reading it, so you and I, Joe, will read the book and you'll find things that I won't find, I'll find things you won't find. And that's just the way of the book. Um, but it's remarkable then. So there's certain parts, certain passages. Um, I mean, I've taken the, the water, the, the Pula Fuca Reservoir down to the tap passage. And I just, that's my, that's, I just keep rereading it and rereading it. And I just adore it for some reason. Um, but everyone has their sections of the book that are like that. You just keep going back to that same section. Um, and it's, it matters more to me than anything else I've ever read, oddly. It's fascinating, isn't it? I, I, when you're speaking about the water coming down, I immediately think of, uh, not that I can claim to have uh, read Finnegan's Wake uh, with any vast understanding, but uh, that's the whole beginning and ending of Finnegan's Wake is, is, is the Liffey flowing. Yeah. Um, so that the idea of the river flowing and the flux um, is very powerful and it comes through in, in every culture, I think. Mm. Uh, let me just before, I don't want to talk too long, but uh, the point that your documentary makes and that Frank makes, and we adverted to briefly about Ulysses being the European, uh, is an interesting uh, European work of literature. It's an interesting uh, concept. And uh, I suppose Frank says a little bit, I ask myself, well, what makes it European? And I suppose in a way, when Frank says in the film that the world of Ulysses is open to more ways of being in the world than maybe uh, in the Ireland in which he grew up, I suppose that's part of what makes it European. I suppose the fact that he goes to uh, Homer as opposed to Irish myth is also, uh, it's just a very interesting thought uh, that he kind of separated from the revival uh, in going going back to Greece, but he he found a very powerful metaphor there for what he wanted to say. But I don't, is there anything that I'm well, missing about what makes it European? <laughs> oh, I would look so, to Joe. You're a, you're an expert on this more than I would ever be. So, but um, but I I think there's um. Look, it's, 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 it's been well said before, but that, that Bloom, of course, is half Hungarian. Molly, of course, is half Spanish. Um, I asked Frank this question again and again and again, because I was trying to find that, that golden nugget that we could deliver. And, um, um, but, it, but one of the things Frank kept saying to me is, it, he, Joyce foresees the European Union. He foresees a time when, when all of these peoples can be together. And in, in effect, by taking someone from Hungary, one end of Europe, and Spain, the other end of Europe, and bringing them to Dublin and having them there, he's already saying something, isn't he? Very profound. Because Ireland, for, for anyone who wouldn't know, um, back there 100 years ago, was, was not a particularly diverse or multicultural place at all. It was, it was very opposite of that. So, so, so Joyce is having fun, but he's also making a very, very strong point um, about, about his aspirations for Dublin, perhaps. And of course, when he goes to Trieste um, in, was it 1904, he immediately finds the world that he had hoped and imagined existed. He'd been to Paris before, but, but Trieste was very different. It was every religion in the world was there. It was every, so many languages were spoken. There's people of all sorts of races and cultural backgrounds. There was a dynamism to the place and Joyce fell in love with that, but I think he'd anticipated it. He'd hoped the world could be like that. And so that's what he's foreseeing. And, and I suppose he's European in the sense that, that the world he's, he's walking away from is the very, very opposite of that. And, and it, it found it very difficult to understand this world that, that Joyce was trying to present back to, to, to it. So Ireland and Europe were very separate, but Joyce wanted it otherwise. Well, that is uh, so fascinating and profound that I think it would be foolish to try and uh, top that kind of summary uh, that we just had. So I also noticed that we're at the, 25 plus minute mark. So Ruin, thank you very much, both for your beautiful documentary, your informative documentary, and for the pleasure of this conversation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Joe, real pleasure. Thanks, bye.